One of the best ways to take your photography to the next level is by getting a portfolio review. What's a portfolio review? This is a portfolio review. So we've been contacted this week by Justin Cottrell from Electric Sleep Images. You can check out his website, electricsleepimages.com. Uh, he's got a wide ranging portfolio from headshots to wrestling, to ringside, uh, to action, to combat sports. So it looks like a film set photography as well. And he submitted 15 images for us to have a look at in a portfolio review. So how this works is we go through the images and offer open and honest feedback. And we look at it bearing in mind elements such as composition, creativity, technical ability, but most importantly, impact, always impact. We're always looking for impact with photographs. Great images always make a great impact. And we start off here with an environmental portrait, really good use of the environment and good use of the tone, specifically with the processing on this one. Lots of yellow, orange hues coming through the orange of the hair, marrying up with the rust in the background and the blue dress, working in complementary with that, which I really, really enjoy like the hand placement the hand down here is really nice and the hand placement up there on the structure on the right hand side and a really good look straight down the middle of the lens into camera real intensity in that look and a nice processing again on this one to get real texture and real feel there when we're working in environments it's important to sort of bear in mind where structures lie within the background how best to frame there are certain lines here as well which aren't quite vertical aren't quite straight this line here of the pipe on the right hand side just coming in at that that angle there and the lines at the top there potentially not as straight as they possibly could be and that just leads our eye around the frame in a slightly awkward way and I'm not sure the crop as low as it is through the through the almost like the, the the calf there of the leg is is the right way to go potentially coming out and looking at more of a full length one to really really show off the whole dress or coming in even closer just above those knees there to really draw our eye up the hand on the right hand side through the face in the middle and then over there to the hand on the left hand side i like the composition of this one though overall i think it's a it's a difficult environment to work in but the main thing here is just the connection with the viewer is really really strong i really really admire that one uh, next one here we've got on ringside and uh, yeah these sort of submission holds are really really good for ringside photography with wrestlers showing out to camera which is really nice love the angle that you've chosen on here so we can see all three faces in there really really well exposed in there and good expressions throughout with hands sort of coming in at all sorts of funny angles um, I like the fact that we've gone for the wider crop so we can see the hand here either of the of the ring valet or of the referee I'm not sure who sort of pointing in i'm not sure it's too much of a distraction though it maybe doesn't add the best context in terms of the storytelling and the narrative of the piece and i think potentially maybe going really super tight around these facial expressions here is possibly the way to go because then we lose the distracting lights at the top we lose the distracting sort of half logo on the right hand side but i can see why you kept it in there um, but this is a lovely lovely capture ringside full of expression and uh, full of action and yeah a really a really good moment well captured there this is the clear water title and um, yeah what a title that's a pretty belt isn't it i like that one as reminiscent of the old intercontinental championship there lit this portrait looks like backstage so first of all a nice clean backdrop that we used i like the velveteen sort of uh, 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 curtain there it's got a slight texture in it which is really nice and that marries up the texture in the background there marries up quite nicely with the texture in the ring jacket there single light coming across the face we've got the brightest element of the portrait is the face which it normally is um, in this instance i'd like to see a tiny little bit of light on that belt just to really see it gleam really see it shine you can buy these big round reflectors that've got gold and silver sides and if you hold those underneath they can reflect a little bit of light back into that belt and that really makes a difference really makes it shine I always take one of those with me uh, on a shoot wherever I go but specifically at wrestling shows and when I'm taking title belts and I'm working in small spaces we can concentrate with the light on the face but then I can use the reflectors to bounce light back in and onto the title belt whether it's around the waist or over the shoulder overall light on the face slightly over overexposed we've got slight highlights there just on the forehead and just underneath the cheek and I, I like the expression but i'd like to see connection with the view i like the symmetry of the whole shot but i really want to see those eyes coming straight down straight down the middle of the lens there but overall good shape good symmetry really shows it off shows off the character and well handled in sort of like a dark situation there oh goodness me that's powerful um 
Wow, that's a that's a hell of a capture there. Hell of a moment to capture. Okay, so everything here in this shot is drawing me into that face and into that expression. And what an expression mid-cage match. I mean, that really is a brutal expression. Covered in blood all the way down the front, down the arms, but really drawing us up into the uh, up into the face here, up into the jawline, up into that expression shooting out there. I like the accent of the uh, lights in the background, um, creating a little bit of separation. And I actually like the slight lines of the cage there, providing a real nice framing without. Unfortunately for me, in the bottom right hand corner here, these guys are just providing a little bit of a distraction. And where we've cropped, we've chosen to crop, crop quite low, just below that belt line. We've cropped through the wrists. We're trying to avoid as much as we can when we crop. We're trying to avoid cropping through limbs as much as we possibly can. I just feel a tighter crop here. If we can just go in here really close, just around the face, keeping those lights in the background and keeping keeping that face sort of screaming out on that rule of thirds. So she's sort of screaming into the negative space on the left-hand side is where to take that shot. Nice processing on this one, really grimy ringside feel to it. The hues of blue in the background as well, working well with the hues of orange and red in the in the subjects in the foreground. Have a consider of a recrop on that one, but that's a really strong photo. Okay, again, here we are. We are working ringside and we're working mid-submission. The focus on this one here is on the guy not giving the submission, but the guy receiving the submission. And I can't help but feel there might have been a moment here where we're really showing out into camera. When I work indie shows, I typically arrive sort of like a, an hour or two before. And it's, it's a good idea just to go around, say hello to people, but also ask people what's happening in the match um, and if there's any moments they want captured. Now, it clues you in as to where to be, but also what it does, it just builds that tiny little bridge of a relation between you as a creator and the, and, and the rest of themselves. They'll familiarize themselves with you. And actually, when they're in these submission holes, they'll look out for you at ringside and you'll actually get sort of like looked into camera and real sort of looking out there. It's a nice sort of triangle shape overall. It's a little overexposed those back lights are super super strong so we're losing some tonality in some of the skin tones here got a little bit of distraction here where this whatever it is hanging from the ceiling is just cutting through the head which is just offsetting that that nice triangular shape unfortunately just cropped off the boot on the left hand side as well would have been nice to keep that in or to go in super close just watch out for those crops but a good low angle here and again, just keep working with these submissions and these are these are where you're going to get real gold, you know, ringside. I, I certainly do. I really enjoy shooting the submission shots ringside because I know that they're going to be there for a while and I can compose myself and I can focus and I know I'm going to get great expression. Timing, timing, timing. Great timing on this one. And what a great angle as well. Timing and an angle. Getting that low angle in here so we can see both faces where he's, the, the guy's receiving the kick has turned his head towards us and the guy uh, giving the kick there with the arms nice and wide there for me. We can see his face just before the moment of impact nice context of having the referee in the background there just sort of looking on um, the screen there providing a little bit of framing actually in the background normally I wouldn't like that sort of distraction but I kind of like that and we just kept in those top ring lights there giving that ring ringside feel um, just watch again attention to detail watch the cameraman in the bottom corner either lose him digitally afterwards or potentially yep we can just come in with a little bit of crop on the right hand side love the tiny little Dutch angle on this one not quite a 45 degree but we've just got a tiny little angle here which adds to the chaos of it overall experiment with that see how much further you can take it and just watch the post processing the lights look like they're giving a sort of green yellow hue to the whole piece so the skin tones just look off natural there a little bit for us there a little bit muddy so just have a look at the post processing if you're processing in raw that can be helped uh, if not in jpeg then you're looking at making sure that you're on the right kelvin the right color temperature when you're shooting ringside character portraits with effie <laughs> yeah i mean that's a really simple backdrop um which works well in color harmony with everything in there so blue is really picking out the oranges in their outfit it's a really adorable expression with both of them looking straight into the camera. I really like that. An adorable cat there that they've got her between them. It's a little tight is all I would say. Just the cropping there is a little tight. I'd allow that one room to breathe, come out a little bit more and really draw our eye into that color in the shot. But the expression and the connection is really, really well handled and really interesting subject matter, which is really what portraiture is all about. This is a different take. Um, so first of all, plus points for the WrestleMania 17 uh, shirt, which I admire there on the left hand side. This looks like a, a really difficult situation 
to photograph in light wise because it looks like it's high noon it looks like the sun's really really bright um, but we've managed to get a sort of journalistic approach to this shot we've come back a little bit we've got the detail of what's going on the gruesome action that's happening in the bottom corner but this is all about context and this is all about what's going on around it and what's going on around it is all the fans with their phones out absorbing the action which i really really admire difficult lighting conditions so it's super dark and with these ones in future if you're aware of the context and you're aware that everyone's getting their phones out it's sometimes a good idea just to switch focus drop the focus in on the guys taking the pictures in the background so we can see the context of what's going on in the foreground anyway but we've drawn the viewer's eye more keenly to what's going on in the background and all of the expressions of the fans ringside as something gruesome happens i've had that before when something exciting happens in the ring just switch that switch that focus to the to the fans ringside and you see all these expressions those expressions are super key to promoters to selling the next show because if you make it look like it's an event that people were excited at and enjoyed last time people are going to want to come next time so they're super keen there difficult lighting conditions for this one though so i admire you for giving this one a go this is uh this is different underwater photography um a really nice attempt at this this is been well handled it's all on a slight angle which actually i think adds to the ambience adds to the floatiness of it nice leading lines throughout a good connection as well with our subject looking straight down into the camera and a really good use of the light around as well i like the choice of the outfit it potentially is better down by the legs where the tassels are and where the dress is than it is around about the top um, and potentially as well with these sorts of floaty shots it's a good idea to have a look at working around with looking off camera and with closing eyes and with all that kind of stuff and drawing these leading arms of these are these leading lines of these arms so that the arms come a little wider and just create more shapes in there loads of experimental stuff from this it makes me want to see more of the shoot and I really, really like the processing again. The, the sort of vintage feel to the color processing on this is really, really appealing. Jesse, simple portrait, looking off of camera there, looking into that space on the left-hand side. Um, props coming out from everywhere there. It's a simple black and white portrait. Um, I maybe want to give it a little bit more space, a little bit more room to breathe. And you can move the light around the face on this one when we're shooting profiles. There's lots of different angles you can move that light around to create real different shape, tone, and form. So have an experiment with that next time uh, when we're shooting this style shot. But it looks like an interesting character. Character. I want to know more about him generally as well just with these profiles it's just a personal thing for me I try to shoot them left to right as, as, as we see it it just fits the way that we read in the Western world we read left to right along the line of the page and just as a viewer that's something that's just a little bit easier on the eye but a simple black and white portrait well handled there this is a little different I like the environmental nature of this shot I like the back to the camera it allows us as a viewer to ask more questions again you've gone with these blues and these orange tones in there with little touches of pink in there which is really really nice really harmonious it's right in the middle of the frame i'm not sure there's not a different angle where we can potentially get down lower and use more of this rubble in there and when we're marrying up these exposures it's really really it, it, it can be a little tricky we've just got a little bit of burnout in the skyline in the background where the sky has just gone a little bit straight into white there we've got a lovely leading line as well on the right hand side of these sort of derelict straight lines coming down from the right hand side so there's maybe a different angle Angle on this I'd like to see different ones from this shoot but overall an, in, an interesting context on this picture nice color processing and it allows us again as a viewer to ask more questions and it answers which is really engaging this is lovely this is a this is a different shot completely and I think this is this is really interesting it's it obviously required a huge amount of space to shoot I, I appreciate the 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 use of space in this shot I'm not sure the fabric is being used as best as it possibly could can it's obviously a very difficult situation but i feel there needs to be more movement more differences in shape along the fabric to really make them look like wings at the moment they're quite elongated and the same look quite parallel along the whole line with little flares at the end on this side here um but i think there's something more there i love the way that we're turning the model's turning to the right hand side there there's something that can be done with those legs to really emphasize movement, movement and mood. Don't be afraid to bend those knees and get it to move into different positions. Overall, though, it's a really it's a shot with a lot of impact. And I love the texture of the of the background that we're sort of laid on there. I just feel that there is just there's, there's something else there. And if you can revisit, if you get the opportunity to revisit this, have a look at it again and see if we can't 
get a more dramatic pose in there and see if we can't use that fabric in a different way uh, to potentially again as we look at it there as well we're just looking at it again the the fabric is the same tonality as the sleeves so the sleeves are slightly lost so i can't help but feel if, if the if the fabric was a different shade a different uh, tone a, a lighter tone or a darker tone to the outfit that we were wearing it would have more impact uh, but a really dramatic shot there I, I really admire this one in studio with the portraits really expressive portraits use of blood within the shoot um, yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting shot there. Um, and, uh, it's difficult to know the exact narrative. It, it looks obviously a bit vampiric. I, I just kind of feel like there should be more. I feel like there should be more blood. There should be more. It should be more gruesome, if that makes sense. This feels... This doesn't feel gruesome enough. It feels almost a little playful. We've obviously used quite a lot of blood because I can see there's quite a lot on the floor, but I just feel like you should get involved in this, you know? If you're going to do it, just go for it, you know, go to town on it. But a good expression and a great connection with the viewer here, just looking over the shoulder there, I just feel if you're going to go down this road of sort of horror portraits, you know, go for it. This is a classic black and white and utterly timeless. Could have been taken in any age good use of the natural light around uh, to sort of define the body shape there just coming across from, from 45 degrees round from behind so our eyes immediately drawn uh, to the torso there where it should be good use of the shadow there coming down from the top of the rock and all the way through lovely little triangle there that we're posed on working with the with, with the scenery in the background looks like difficult lighting conditions again i'm not sure this hand here clenched is the right pose for this shot and i like the way that we're looking down but i feel that there's an experimentation there where we can sort of look off into that space there where the sky is at the top of the shot um, but a good control of lighting style outside and a good processing into black and white it's i feel it's the right processing of black and white there uh, to give a really really grimy timeless portrait outside uh, yeah and then i saw this one do the rounds when it went out i think um i think it went i think it popped viral for a, for a short time and this is like a Again, a timeless portrait of um, two legends within the wrestling industry standing behind the curtain before they're due to go out. Um, so, so much of wrestling history is synonymous with um, the history of Sting and Flair. And this is just them taking that moment before they go through the curtain. I think that's been really subtly captured. I think it's a really delicate backstage portrait. And I think it's actually a real moment that is timeless first of all but it's really really subtle and i admire it a lot I, th I think it's just you've got in there you've got close it's a really intimate moment and i love the fact that one of the subjects is profile one of the subjects is straight on one of the subjects is high one of the subjects is low they're both looking down though in different directions and they both look like they're involved in their own thoughts before they go out to the ring and that again as a photographer what you're doing is you're putting a photograph out there that represents something but also allows the viewer to ask questions. What are they thinking? What's about to happen? What's going through their minds? And um, yeah, I just feel it's a, I just, I just feel it's a wonderful portrait and something that you wouldn't have been able to do sort of like, you know, decades ago, they wouldn't have allowed this sort of access, but to get this sort of access now allows us as photographers, particularly within the wrestling industry to capture moments that, you know, will stand the test of time and, um, and, and will, you know, have a lot of resonance, I suppose. Uh, as the years go by. So thank you to Justin for submitting your images for portfolio review. We hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us. If you'd like a portfolio review, guess what? You can get one. You can email me portrait of a wrestler at gmail.com and we can feature your work on this channel and offer some open and honest feedback. There'll be some videos popping up here. Uh, we do all sorts of things uh, behind the scenes, uh, ringside tutorials, lighting tutorials, and we also have a new series where we ask your favorite wrestlers for their three favorite photographs and talk about them in a short form format. It's not a boring podcast like you might think. No, it's an interesting video. Go and check it out up there. Like and subscribe, you know, all those sorts of things down here. And, you know, leave a comment, say nice things, do nice things, be kind, all the best.